Hello everyone, this is Scott and Lawton from ChemTalk and today we're going to talk about the amazing experiments we did with neodymium compounds. I think that what, what I want everyone to understand is that this is really about seeing new compounds for the first time. Very few people have seen all these compounds. I mean, probably like 50 years ago, people made them and they're like, okay, there's not anything hugely interesting. For us, it's it's really exciting because you, you think you probably will know what it's gonna look like, but you're not sure. And all these compounds act differently. They look a little differently. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the colors and properties right. really surprise you. So. It was a very interesting experiment for sure. Let's talk a little bit about neodymium and then we'll talk about the experiment and how we did it and, and how it can be done. Neodymium's a rare earth element and it's uh, it's used, this is a, a magnet, right? A yeah, that is an 8,000 gauss neodymium magnet. And what's this? That is a, another neodymium magnet, but that one is specifically out of a speaker. So you can see like an industrial application for neodymium. It's very common in speakers and other electronics. Well, my understanding is that neodymium is also used in, in glass, it's used in lasers, magnets, it's also used in wind turbines, but it's not used in all wind turbines, it's only used in some, so it's not like every one of them will have to have a neodymium magnet. The, the history with these magnets is very interesting. I learned that they were first made by General Motors and simultaneously by a Japanese company in 1984. The reason was because they had these samarium cobalt magnets but it was expensive because samarium is really expensive. Right. And the ingredients in this, it's um, neodymium, iron, and boron. I believe it's something like ND3FE14B. Neodymium is one of the most common compounds as well, so that's, that's one of the reasons it's very cheap. It's just as common in the Earth's crust actually as nickel, copper, a lot of elements we're used to, so it's not that rare. Right. Also, rare earth elements are also found with thorium a lot and thorium is very very slightly radioactive. We got our hands on some neodymium oxide and remember when we tried to dissolve the erbium oxide and the chromium oxide? Yeah and they did not dissolve very well. Nothing, no yeah, zero. We <laughs> used hydrochloric acid so we thought for sure that this neodymium oxide was going to be really difficult and I decided to use 68% nitric acid and I measured out about 17 grams of neodymium oxide and maybe 25 grams of, of the concentrated nitric acid. And when I poured it in, luckily it was in a, a large Erlenmeyer flask because that was literally the most exothermic reaction I've ever seen. That thing just bubbled and hissed and almost came out of the flask. Luckily it was a small amount and um, that flask got really hot, but we ended up with some great neo, neodymium nitrate oh, yeah. that we use for our experiment. Neodymium has very strong absorption of certain colors at, at certain points in the, the visible light spectrum. So in sunlight, it's more of a, a lavender purple color, most of the compounds, but in fluorescent light, it's clear or yellow. So just by changing the light or walking around the room, the, the solution completely changed color, which was really interesting. We got our neodymium oxide converted to neodymium nitrate and in solution. And the next thing we did was we wanted to create a, a bunch of compounds. And the easiest way to do that is by just forming insoluble compounds that can precipitate out and we'll see them right before our eyes. So we decided to do the fluoride, the carbonate, phosphate, molybdate, tungstate, sulfide, ferrocyanide, and chromate. And I think the hope was that we'd get some interesting color or surprise because mm -hmm. most of the compounds we saw were what? They're like what a color. They're got like a pinkish purple. Pinkish hint purple. purple. But, they also, but they all behaved slightly differently in the, in the flat as well. The rare earth fluorides are insoluble. That precipitated out really nicely, a really nice pink color. But it was very like 
gelatinous. Like I almost felt like we could we could see through it. Oh yeah, for sure. Like if you didn't look closely, you wouldn't even be sure if the precipitate is there. And then we did the phosphate, and the phosphate had a very different consistency. And, and the phosphate was it's still pinkish purple, but a little whiter. Right. And it filled up the whole test tube. And, and phosphate is easy to do because I think you can even get that in most hardware stores. Mm -hmm. Carbonate, we used the sodium carbonate that we made in the oven from sodium bicarbonate. And that gave a very similar, very light pinkish purple precipitate that filled the whole test tube. It didn't settle quickly. Phosphate and carbonate are interesting because those compounds have whatever color that the, the metal ion has. It doesn't like override the color. It's a very neutral anion. Next, two of my favorite ions, we mix it with sodium molybdate, and sodium molybdate is very easy to get. It's a very relatively safe compound, inexpensive, and it forms really colorful precipitates, and this one didn't disappoint. It was a very nice, richly colored, pinkish purple or lilac. And then we use sodium tungstate, which is a very heavy ion. Again, it looked very similar to the molybdate. It was a nice, rich color, lilac, filled the test tube. You can see in the video here is all five of them next to each other. You can see the fluoride, and then the phosphate, then the carbonate, mm -hmm. then the molybdate then the tungstate and you can see they're all they're all slightly different. That's the really amazing thing about precipitates is that sometimes some will go settle at the bottom, some of them will stick to the glass, some of them will coalesce to a very small volume where others will hydrate and take a large volume. But then the next three were the really interesting ones because these ions often are very different colors or for different properties. Mm -hmm. Next we did the sulfide. We used some sodium sulfide, which has that smell to it, that hydrogen sulfide oh, smell. Yeah. We knew that this reaction, because the neodymium nitrate was slightly acidified, could produce a very small amount of hydrogen sulfide, but um, it would not be a large amount because 99.9% .9 of it will be forming the precipitate. We added the, the neodymium nitrate to the sodium sulfide precipitate form, and it was this interesting yellow tan color, very different from like the other tan. precipitates, sort of a, a brownish, again, it depends on the light, but, mm -hmm. and yeah, there was a little bit of, of hydrogen sulfide smell. There was no bubbling, so it wasn't producing very much, but after we produced it, just be on the safe side, I, I put it outside and let it off gas outside because we don't want to be filling up places with hydrogen <laughs> sulfide, but it's very minute amount. At one hundredth or one thousandth of the amount that's dangerous, you smell oh, yeah, you just like you smell a rotten egg. Yeah. You just have to be careful because hydrogen sulfide, your nose will get acclimated to it. Yeah, you don't want to smell it for too long. For sure. Next, we added potassium ferrocyanide. Potassium ferrocyanide is such an amazing compound. We used it to make Prussian blue. We have a video online how to make Prussian blue. It's a very safe relatively non-toxic compound, but it always makes really interesting compounds because the, the ferrocyanide like absorbs other ions and it brings other ions. So this was very white and when it made the ferrocyanide, the neodymium ferrocyanide quickly dropped down mm -hmm. to the bottom of the very test nice. tube. It looks so beautiful just to see this flowing white. It was almost like a powder. It almost didn't yeah, feel like it, a It's a very thing. fine powder as well. That was really surprising and really unique to see the neodymium ferrocyanide look so different. Not only was the color different, but just all the properties were nothing like the other. Oh, it was one of the honestly probably one of the coolest ones that we did. Uh, even though it was just a white white precipitate, it was a very interesting white precipitate to the least. Now the last one, the chromate. We knew sometimes chromates are vibrantly colored, and this one didn't surprise us. It was a very brilliant yellow. Mm -hmm. Very, um, very. Because of the chromate. Neodymium chromate sticks to glass immediately inside the test tube, unlike anything I've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. If anyone knows why it sticks to glass, leave your answers in the, in the comments. So that also settled to the bottom. It didn't settle it like a half inch amount like the ferrocyanide, it mm -hmm. settled to about an inch. But all the other compounds still fill up the whole test tube. Right. No one else settled. So. It's just so amazing how some precipitates are like gelatinous and they're almost like super hydrated. 
and take up a huge volume. And others are the opposite. Like clearly they did not absorb any water mm -hmm. or become hydrated and they just went right down to the bottom of the test tube. Yep. So again, this experiment just shows like how exciting chemistry is because you feel like you're like one of the first explorers to ever form these compounds. But whenever you you like you mix these compounds, there's millions of combinations. You could be coming up with something for the very first mm -hmm. time. Oh yeah, we're definitely one of the few people who've actually, you know, at least taken video of some of this as well. So Yeah, I haven't seen even pictures of some of these compounds before and I look forward to to doing uh, doing some more experiments like these. So For sure. if you guys want to see more um, interesting compounds like this, let us know in the comments. Um, if you learned something or found something interesting, like the video, subscribe please, visit us at chemistrytalk.org. Uh, we're a chemistry education nonprofit trying to um, show everyone all the amazing things about chemistry. Lawton and I and the rest of the team have some really, really great stuff coming up. So thanks for watching and uh, um, we'll see you again soon. Yeah, thank you. Bye.